morning friends. I am Dr. Y. D. Devedi, Professor from Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad, India. I am in the continuation of the course Aircraft Stability and Control. Today I am in lecture number 18, which is maneuvering point stick fixed. Before I start this lecture, I would like to revisit the previous lectures, previous topics. I have covered in this course about longitudinal static stability. We have seen that the to have a longitudinal static stability, we should have to meet the two conditions. One is CM alpha should be less than zero or negative, and the CM naught, the coefficient of moment at zero angle of attack, it should be positive or greater than zero. If we are able to meet these two conditions, we can say that aircraft is longitudinal static stable. Once we talk about the static stability, it is the tendency of the aircraft to revert to its equilibrium condition after disturbance if the disturbing force is removed. In this case, we have discussed about effect of wing, effect of tail, effect of engine, effect of fuselage. Also, we have covered the control related to longitudinal stability and the main control of this stability is elevator. Elevator, just I want to show here. In this, we have the, this is the fuselage, these are the main wings, these are the horizontal tail and this is the vertical fin. Elevators are fixed at the horizontal tail, the trailing edge of the horizontal tail. You can see the black portion, this both the sides and both will go either up or down as per the requirement, these will be deflected. So if I want to make nose up, it means the force would be downward. So the elevator has to go upward like this, elevator has to go upward like this. If it is going, the force will be downward, nose will go up. If I want to make nose down, then it has to go, elevators has to go down and a force will act upward and it, this will pull upward. So the elevator is the primary control for this longitudinal stability and the longitudinal control. In this process, in today's lecture, I am going to take these topics. This lecture covers following topic, understanding of maneuvering points, understanding stick fixed neutral point, determination of neutral point through flight test, determination of maneuvering point through flight test. These are the topics and how we can determine the neutral point and the maneuver point once we fly the aircraft or during flight test. We will be also able to reply the following questions. What is maneuvering point? What is neutral point? And how to determine maneuvering and neutral point by experiment? And some new idea for the new research. I am going to discuss and how we can find out in our this class. I think you remember in my previous class, in last class, we have developed a relationship of elevator deflection for the trim and we have seen that elevator required or the elevator trim is equal to delta E naught plus D delta E by D, D CL trim into CL trim. Here this term D delta E by D CL trim, we can approximate 
as d delta e by dcl trim is equal to minus dcm by dcl divided by cm delta e. And we have so much discussed about dcm by dcl and this dcm by dcl is a static margin or sm. So this dcm by dcl is a minus and not minus xcg. So this minus and this minus here it is a and not it is a neutral point minus x bar cg wherever these bars are there they are the non-dimensional numbers. So here n naught bar minus x cg bar divided by cm delta e. So we can write that delta e trim is now d delta e naught plus d delta e by dcl we can replace by n naught bar minus x cg bar by cm delta e from here to here. So we have got here d delta, d delta e naught plus n naught bar minus x naught bar cg divided by cm delta e into cl trim. You know that the n naught is a neutral point and x cg is the cg location of the aircraft with respect to the a reference line and mostly we take this reference line from leading edge of the wing and cm delta e is a dcm by d delta e per unit deflection what is the, the coefficient of moment. Let us assume for the low speed of the aircraft as cm delta e will not change with Mach number. So we can write here that delta e is equal to minus cm naught by cm delta e. So the, it is a cm naught delta e naught this value whatever is here this is equal to we can write that minus cm naught divided by cm delta e. Similar the neutral point may vary from power on, power off or windmilling condition as we have discussed in our earlier uh, classes. Okay, So here I will take again the re uh, revisit the previous classes and in this we have seen what is the effect of the cruise of aircraft. So once we talk about the cruise, cruise means it is a when the lift is equal to weight and thrust is equal to drag in this diagram we can see it is a equilibrium in which lift is equal to weight and thrust is equal to drag. In this case if you know that uh, lift is equal to half rho v square s cl for the cruise we will write l is equal to w. So we write here w is equal to half rho v square s cl. So this cl here this cl is equal to 2 into w by s divided by rho v square where w by s is a wing loading. So 2 into wing loading divided by half rho v square. This cl is trim for cruise condition. So if you want to put in the previous equation the CL trim, so CL trim we have to take 2W by S rho V square. In cruise the neutral point power on will be used. So we have discussed that if aircraft is taking off cruising we have to take N naught power on. So this N naught power on will be always less than N naught without power. So here for t is equal to d and l is equal to w. So we can write that this thrust is equal to w by l by d or w by cl by cd. In cruise where l by d or cl by cd is a maximum uh, in this case we will get so if this value is maximum we will get t is equal to minimum. So if you want thrust minimum so CL by CD ratio should be maximum. So in this case thrust minimum is equal to W by CL by CD maximum. In this case we have to take CD is equal to CD naught plus KCL square. It is, okay, This is the drag polar equation and here CL is equal to under root CD naught by K. So in this case CL at which the CL by CD is maximum. 
So in this case, if like this situation, we have to take CD is equal to CD naught plus KCL square and CL, the coefficient of lift is equal to under root CD naught divided by K. For steady climb, so in this, what we got the relation that if the aircraft is cruising, okay, so it is straight and level flight like this, here lift is equal to the weight of the aircraft and the thrust which is produced by the engine is balanced by the drag of the aircraft. If this is the situation, we should follow and we should use the equation for CL trim delta E is equal to delta E naught plus DCM by D delta E into CL trim. So that CL trim we have to take from here, CD we have to take from here and CL we have to take the under root CD naught and you after putting whatever value we are getting the CL, that is called the thrust required for minimum minimum thrust required in this condition. Now, if aircraft is climbing, climbing means it is going up. So, what will be the condition? So, here I have shown a diagram. In this diagram, if you see, this is the aircraft, thrust is in forward direction and it is opposite to the drag. Weight will always remain towards the earth, but the direction of lift will be always perpendicular to the free stream velocity. So, here L is in this direction. If you see here that this is the your gamma, so L will be balanced by W cos gamma. So, here this value of this is less than this W. So, here we need a less coefficient of lift in this climb condition. Okay, so here we can see for a steady climb forces in direction of the velocity v, it is t minus d minus w sin theta. So, here w sin theta will also act in this direction. So, t minus w, t minus d minus w sin gamma in this direction and the vertical forces lift will be w cos gamma. So, here we can write that L is equal to half rho v square SCL is equal to W cos gamma. So, this CL is equal to W cos gamma divided by half rho v square S. So, this CL is CL climb. This is what? This is called the CL climb. So, which is less than the cruise CL that is the W by half rho v square. So, if it is a cruise, this L should be equal to the W. But here it is a W cos gamma. So, the value of CL climb will be less than the value of CL cruise. So, it is due to the reduced drag at cruise is more. So, now elevator deflection for the climb. So, we, we know that delta E trim is equal to delta E naught plus N naught minus XCG divided by CM delta E and this is CL trim. I think we are very much familiar with this equation. So, here for this CL trim, we have to put this value from equation 3. This we have to put this equation. Then only we can get the exact how much delta E trim required for this cruise condition. So, this type of things we have to ensure that all things are working. So, we can understand that the delta E, the CL trim, the value of CL trim will be lesser than the value of uh, in the climb than CL cruise. So, delta E required during climb will be somewhat less than the delta E required during the cruise. That is the uh, conclusion between and if we compare between climb and the cruise, the CL trim of the climb is lesser than the CL of the cruise. So, the value of delta E trim keeping all other parameters constant, if the value of CL trim is less than the CL cruise, so the delta E trim required will be lesser than the delta E trim required for the climb is lesser than the delta E required for the cruise. So, now we have to see here that suppose nose mounted a 
a propeller is mounted at the nose of the aircraft here one propeller is like this and it is rotating like this so we know that t minus d is minus w sin gamma is equal to 0 so t minus d is equal to w sin gamma so t minus d by w is equal to sin gamma if you multiply it by v in this equation so t v minus d v by w is equal to v sin gamma and this v sin gamma is a rate of climb if you see here this is the velocity so this upward is a v sin and if this is the v okay this is the gamma so this is the v cos gamma and this is the v sin gamma and this v sin gamma is known as a rate of climb per unit time it is how much it is moving so here tv is a power available this you can see here the plot here tv this is the power available and this is the power required so the difference excess power the maximum excess power at what speed you have the maximum excess power the difference between power available and the power required where you have the maximum at the speed at which you have the maximum power excess that is called v star and if you fly in this your then your rate of climb will be highest so if you want to fly the highest or the most rate of climb you should fly at the speed at which the power available on the system or the aircraft power the excess power available is maximum so in this we, we can see that by putting v star corresponding to the speed for the maximum so in this equation of delta e trim we should put this star if you want the maximum uh, speed for maximum rate of climb when power excess is maximum so pilot will trim at v star speed to get this by this cl to be calculated and put into equation for cl trim the designers to do this during design phase pilot will not do that so it is a job of engineers we have to make sure that we should find out the cl trim by using v star and then we have to use now the next phase is landing phase so at what cl trim we need to uh, take off or landing of the aircraft so we know that again delta e is equal to delta e trim okay are re required is equal to delta e naught plus n n naught bar minus x cg bar divided by cm delta e into cl trim by observing the figure we can find the cl so here this cl is equal to w cos gamma and this here gamma is a landing angle landing path angle so w cos gamma divided by half rho v square s so here what weight w we have to take during the landing so you can see that uh, every aircraft when they are flying after one hour or two hour lot of fuel is consumed so weight we have to take in this case the the weight of landing not the weight of initial so this w will be less than the weight of takeoff so the cl in this case w to be put as per landing weight so in this case cl here this w is equal to landing weight of aircraft landing weight of aircraft and it will be less than the takeoff weight because fuel is consumed because fuel is consumed so this we have to uh, understand very well that okay how much we have to take this way i think it is very much clear of what we have to do in the landing so in this uh, 
we have three type of this n naught minus x g. So n naught we have the power on first one and second one is no power n naught for power off and n naught for wind milling. So which one we have to take for this landing case? So during the landing propeller put to wind milling condition. So neutral point of it is called propeller wind milling to be taken to calculate n naught on delta E trim equation. Down was also observed during the landing. So alpha t is equal to alpha FRL plus IT minus epsilon and effective angle of attack at tail will reduce as the epsilon down was angle of attack will reduce to epsilon by 2 during landing. So alpha t increases as down was is reduced. So during so during landing available delta E deflection to be kept reserved to counter down was reduction. So we, uh, during landing your down was is reduced. So uh, we need to take more uh, this delta E. So delta alpha T is equal to CL of the wing divided by pi into aspect ratio and this epsilon is equal to 2 CL by pi aspect ratio. So trim in maneuvering. Now uh, we have to talk about maneuver because today's uh, topic is maneuvering point. So we have to understand that what is the maneuvering? How to trim the aircraft in maneuvering? Here we have the two cases. One is the pull up case, another is the steady coordinated turn. First, we will be taking the pull up and this you can see the diagram here. The aircraft is here and it is trying to go upward like in this curve. So we will have the radius R. So in this one a special force that is called centripetal force will act. So we have to make the equation of motion in that way. So here L is greater than W. So here always L will be more than 1. So L minus W. So is L minus W is equal to mv square by r and this mv square is a centripetal acceleration v square by centripetal acceleration and if we make mv square by r it is a centripetal, uh, centripetal force. So here in this case L is not is equal to w so L is equal to nw where n is a load factor and it is called L by w. So in place of L we will keep nw here. So nw minus w is equal to mv into v by r because we know that v by r is equal to q and is called the pitch rate. So here we have taken w common. So here n minus 1 is equal to mv into q where q is equal to v by r is called the pitch rate. Now I have put here w is equal to mg. You all know that weight is equal to mass into gravity and n minus 1 and m v q. So m and m is here cancelled. So here we got the q pull up. This pitch rate, how much pitch rate we will get is equal to q is equal to g by v n minus 1. So which component generate this q or pitch rate? The pitch rate is generated by the elevator of the aircraft. This Q should be used for pull up case in maneuvering, pull up maneuvering. Okay, so we have to use G by V and minus 1. Now the second case is steady coordinated turn. If you see this steady coordinated turn, so if it has to bank down like this, it has to bank down and it has to turn like this, but in the same plane but it has to rotate with some reference. So this reference is mentioned as a with respect to some axis it is turning like this. So how much it is turning? This you can see the angle the right wing is down here phi. So lift will act perpendicular to this. So this vertical it, this will be the L cos phi will balance the 
weight. So here, this you can see here, L cos phi is equal to W and L sin phi, the vertical force of this, in this direction, this L sin phi will be balancing mv square by r, centrifugal force. So if we divide by this, this by this, so we will get tan phi, tan phi is equal to mv square by r into mg. So m, m cancel, we will get here v square by rg. But we know that this psi dot is equal to v by r, it is a pitch rate, okay, psi dot is equal to v by r. So we, we know that q is equal to psi dot sine phi and if theta, the phi is equal to 0, no roll, so q is equal to 0 and no pitch. So here this tan phi is equal to v square by rg or r is equal to v square by g tan phi. So we know that q is equal to v by r sin phi, putting r is equal to v square by g tan phi. So this q is equal to g by v sin phi tan phi. How to find sin phi and tan phi? Just you can see here that l cos phi is equal to w or l by d w, l by w is equal to 1 by cos phi is equal to n. So cos phi is equal to 1 by n and sin phi will be the under root n square by minus 1 and tan phi is equal to n by under root n square minus 1. So here we have got that q of steady coordinated term is equal to q by v n minus 1 by n. In that it was for pull up it was q by v n minus 1 but here we have a small difference that n minus 1 by 1, 1 by n. So this is the uh, pitch rate for a steady coordinated term. So now if we discussed about control part of elevator deflection. So we have just derived the Q for pull up and Q for a steady coordinated term and we got that Q for pull up is equal to Q by V n minus 1 and Q for a steady coordinated term Q by V n minus 1 by n. These equations show that if V is low, if this V is low, Q will be more. You can see this V, if you increase the value of V, the Q will increase. So what is the elevator deflection required? That is delta E for pull up with load factor due to the pitch rate Q. Tail will go down with a velocity Q L T. This velocity will generate a lift delta L upward and moment delta m anti-clockwise direction. So an additional angle of attack delta alpha t will be generated. So just you can see here that as pitch q is nose is going upward, oh, it's just it. Okay, you can see here. You see this aircraft, if aircraft is straight, it is going and you are giving pitch up, tail will go down. So the velocity is v from this direction. So this, it will, and the distance from here to here is lt. So this velocity into lt, this will be the, it will going down with velocity q into lt. This velocity will generate a additional a angle of attack. This is a delta alpha t and this delta alpha t is equal to q l t by v. This you can see here. So q l t by v here and this additional delta alpha will generate a additional lift and this additional lift is delta l and this l into this distance fr from here to here will make the your moment negative. So now this tau is equal to d alpha t by d delta e and delta alpha t is equal to I, tau into delta e. So for tau into delta e plus q l t by v is equal to 0. 
So additional elevator required, delta E required is equal to minus QLT by tau V. So delta E required is equal to 1.1 QLT by tau V. This 1.1 is due to the interference of wing and fuselage. We have added 10% extra elevator required. So as and when you make the nose up or pitch up, you need some additional elevator and this additional elevator is depend upon the pitch rate, Q, LT, tau and the velocity of the aircraft as mentioned in this equation. Now during cruise elevator deflection required. So in the cruise we have seen that how much uh, this uh, elevator deflection required now. Previously, delta E is equal to delta E naught plus D delta E by D C L trim into C L trim minus here minus 1.1 Q L T by tau V. Okay, so during pull up, this Q will be G by V and minus 1. Putting this value, elevator required to trim delta E pull up is equal to minus 1.1 by tau V L T. Q is equal to here this G by V and minus 1. So delta E pull up required is equal to minus 1.1 G tau V square LT into N minus 1. So we got a very good relation for um, total delta E required for the pull up is equal to delta E naught plus D C, delta E by CL trim into CL trim. Here uh, CL trim is left, CL trim should be there, okay, so delta E by DCL into CL trim minus 1.1 G LT and minus 1 by tau V square. So here what we have to, to take the CL, CL we have to take here, we have to multiply by NW, NW by half rho V square S, so this CL it should be taken this way. Okay, so that we have to very much careful that at what condition we have to take which coefficient of lift that makes the uh, system very convenient. So now change in delta E due to steady coordinated turn. Uh, we have seen that delta E ST is equal to minus 1.1 GLT tau V square. Here we have to put N minus 1 by n. In the previous case for the pull up n minus 1 and here n minus 1 by n. So total elevator deflection during steady coordinated turn delta E naught plus d delta E by d C L into C L minus 1.1 g L T tau V square n minus 1 by n. So these are the equations. These have to be used for different maneuvering conditions. So now we have to discuss about maneuvering point stick fixed. So we got the equation for elevator deflection at pull up and we have seen that delta E is equal to delta E naught plus D delta E by DCL into CL trim minus 1.1 G LT by tau V square and minus 1. So we can uh, little do some simplification. So delta E naught is equal to D delta E by DCL. In CL trim, we have to put NW by half rho V square S minus 1.1 G LT by tau V square and minus 1. So now we have to see that delta E by delta N. If you make this equation and differentiate with load factor, so what we will get? This will be 0. Now D delta E by DCL, this N will be vanished. W by half rho V square minus 1.1 G L T by tau V square because this uh, this term has gone and n has become 1. So this is 1.1 G L T by tau V square. So here this did, did uh, delta E by D C L is equal to X C G minus N naught and this is called S M. So what is the maneuvering point? Maneuvering point is the point where the 
d delta e by dn is equal to 0. Okay, so in this equation, if I put the 0, then of what I am going to get? So here, d delta e by dcl into w half rho v square minus 1.1 g lt tau v square is equal to 0. So now for d delta e by dcl, I can write dcm by dcl divided by cm delta e w by half rho v square s minus 1.1 g lt by tau v square is equal to 0. Because here d delta e by dcl is equal to minus dcm by dcl divided by cm delta e. Now minus d dcm by dcl half w by half rho v square s is equal to 1.1 g lt cm delta e divided by tau v square v square v square is cancelled. So here minus dcm by dcl is equal to 1.1 g lt and this rho will come here and cm delta e tau 2 by w by s and we know that minus dcm by dcl is equal to x cg minus and naught. So this will become 1.1 g lt rho cm delta e divided by 2 w by s. So now this cg is now the maneuvering point. So n maneuvering point minus neutral point is equal to 1.1 g lts cm delta e divided by 2 w by s. So nm is equal to we have sent here it will become the n naught minus 1.1 g lt s cm delta e divided by 2 w by s. This equation for a maneuvering point. So in this equation, we can find out the maneuvering point and this maneuvering point will be more than n naught because the value of cm delta e is negative. So this negative will be added here. So th this will be n o n naught plus 1.1 g lt s cm delta e divided by 2 w by s. So here if nm is greater than n naught, so nm will be aft of the neutral point and nm is much behind to neutral point that we have to see. So maneuvering point is still fixed. So here we can see that if I draw here a, a line like this and this is the neutral point. So your nm will be here aft. So if our, this is the n naught and this is the nm and nm is greater than n naught. Okay. So neutral point maneuvering is higher value than the neutral point of the aircraft. So in maneuvering, the more aircraft becomes more stable than the non-maneuvering. If it is steady state, your stability is less. But once your aircraft is maneuvering or climbing or your um, pull up or turning and all, your aircraft stability has is increased. So now we have to further uh, investigate the same thing again. Delta E by delta delta n is equal to minus dcm by dcl cm delta e 2 w by s v square minus 1.1 g lt by tau v square is equal to minus 1 by v square 1 by v square 2 w by s rho cm delta e we have taken the common so here we, we will get 1.1 g lt rho cm delta e 2 tau w s plus x c g minus n naught. So here minus 1 by 2, 2 w s rho c m delta e, this value plus x c g and for n naught we can write minus n m minus 1.1 g l t rho c m delta e by 2. So this, this cancel. So d delta e by d t n is equal to 1 by v square minus 1 by v square. 2 w by s rho cm delta e x c g minus n m. So here n m is a maneuvering point, n naught is a neutral point. 
Now, how to determine neutral point and the maneuvering point? So, our next topic is how to determine NO and NM through the flight test. So, determination of the neutral point by the experimental determination. We know that neutral point is the CG location at which DCM by DCL is equal to 0. Also, we know that D delta E by DCL trim is equal to minus DCM by DCL divided by CM delta E. We know that CL is equal to 2 W by S rho V square. So, what we have to do is, we have to take one CG location. We have to fly the aircraft with particular speed, that is V1. In this V1, we, we can find out the CL1. And for this CL1, how much delta E required, we have to find out. Same way, for different speed V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, we have to find out delta E1, delta E2, delta E3, delta E4, delta E5. We can also calculate with the help of V1. CL1, CL2, CL3, CL4 and CL5. So now we have got the delta E and the CL and if we plot the delta E and the CL here. So for the first CG location, we got 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. For the second, also in this also, this we will get all the three like this, like this and we will plot like this, like this, like this like this for 3, 4, 5 and wherever it is intersecting this. So, now we got the slope of this curve. So, D delta E by D C L which we have got from here, we will plot D delta E by D C L versus X G location. And in this we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, we will get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and we have to join here and the place where this is cutting the XG location, that point is called the neutral point. So, like this, we can calculate the neutral point of the aircraft and it will be very nice to get the neutral point because neutral point plays very important role. And if the your CG location is going Aft of this neutral point, aircraft will become unstable in a statically case, but this will also affect the dynamic case also because to have the dynamic static dynamic stability, you should have first static stability con condition has to be satisfied. So our aircraft, the CG location should always be ahead of the neutral point, then only your aircraft is fit to fly. So it is very much essential to determine the neutral point of the aircraft and where this thing is falling. Now, the next point we have to discuss about the maneuvering point and we have just now derived the equation and once we talk about the maneuvering point, this is depend on the load factor. So, how to find maneuvering point NM? NM is that CG location at which D delta E by DN is equal to 0, where N is equal to load factor. We also know that N is equal to 1 by cos phi for steady coordinated turn. Phi can be obtained from cockpit bank angle indicator. In cockpit, we have the bank angle indicator. So, as you roll, so phi is what? It is a roll angle. How much angle from horizontal? This angle, which is shown here, this angle is phi. So, this angle we have to see that and we can find out during flying the aircraft by the cockpit. So, in this also, we have to see the temperature, the, the wind, uh, this uh, uh, air, air density and all things we should have monitored. And we should have the CG location 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. For each CG location, we have to set the velocity V1, V2, V3, V4, V5. And then we have to set the 
फाइव वन फाइव टू फाइव थ्री फाइव फोर फ्रॉम हियर वी कैन गेट द हाउ मच डेल्टा ई इज रिक्वायर्ड डेल्टा ई वन डेल्टा ई टू डेल्टा ई थ्री डेल्टा ई फाइव इज रिक्वायर्ड सो वी नो दैट एन इज इक्वल टू हट वन बाई कास फाइव सो हियर वी कैन गेट एन वन एन टू एन थ्री एन फोर एन फाइव नाउ इफ यू ड्रा द प्लॉट डेल्टा ई वर्सेज एन सो वी हैव गॉट दिस डेल्टा ई वी हैव गॉट दिस एंड इफ वी प्लॉट फॉर वन सी जी लोकेशन सो वी विल गेट वी वन वी टू वी थ्री वी फोर वी फाइव दिस फॉर द वन केस फॉर द सेकेंड केस ऑल्सो फॉर द सेकेंड सी जी लोकेशन वन टू थ्री फोर एंड फाइव फॉर द थर्ड केस वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव for the fourth case also we got so if you see here we have got for each condition we got the slope of each this this is called the slope and this is called d delta e by d n so now we have to draw the next plot with respect to this versus center of gravity location and this center of this x c g 1 x c g 2 this we know so we will get that this is the one case two case three case four case so in this the first case what is the slope it is negative so it will be negative so we got this is the first point for this one, line 1 this is the line 2 this is the line 3 line 4 like this and if we extend this thing and wherever it is cutting the xg line that is called the maneuvering point nm so like this we can find out the aircraft maneuvering point because this gives a ultimate location of neutral point beyond that your center of gravity should not go behind or aft of the neutral point so it is very much essential for a designer for aeronautical engineer once you design the aircraft you should make sure that your neutral point should be known and how to find out i have explained and you can do some project you can do some research work on this and uh, this you can so we have seen that uh, q pull up we have find out that it is a g by v n minus 1 and q st is equal to g by v n minus 1 so we need to give some additional elevator required as delta alpha t is equal to q lt by v is increased to neutralize the delta alpha we need to neutralize tau into delta e into q delta e so we need to find out how much control is required so for the cruise condition delta e is equal to delta e not plus d delta e by d cl into cl and here delta e is equal to delta e not plus this we have already find out and here we have to put cl is equal to n w by half rho v square and delta e not is equal to delta e is equal to delta e not plus d delta e by cl into cl minus 1.1 g n minus 1 by v lt by tau v so we got that delta e not plus delta e, delta e by d cl into cl minus 1.1 g lt n minus y tau into v square okay so i think this already i have covered maneuvering point okay so so this is a uh, already i have covered and this is my references i am using the robert c nelson aircraft stability and automatic control and also i am referring nptel lecture of aircraft stability and control by professor ap ghosh from iit kanpur thank you very much for joining this lecture please be tuned for the next lecture and hope the lecture will be very fruitful and it might have given some inputs or some insight into the neutral point and the minor point so, uh, thank you very much for the join the class like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates